Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. How do we how do we actually give the truth um, at the same time as as be a follower of Christ? Let me explain to you what I mean. How do we tell someone what we really need to say to them without losing it? You know, because it's, um, it's one thing to, to say, okay, we need to assess our hearts. We need to make sure that we're going into this with, without, um, you know, without selfish desires that we need met. And if there are selfish desires in the conflict, then we need to assess them. But, okay, what if there is something that's really going on in a person's world where we need to confront that? Where I'm from, um, Australia, uh, Australians, I'll give, you a, I'll give you an idea, are generally non, non-confrontational as a culture. We just like to pretend there is no problems, okay? So if there is a really bad problem, um, we'll, be, we'll say, oh, yeah, she's right, mate, it's all good, yep. But inside we'll be going, what in the heck is going on with them? And, and if it's repeated, repeated, then there comes a point where you're like, well, you know, I've been nice about this for ages and uh, it's time for me to tell you what's wrong with you and, and it'll come out in conflict. So we, we let it build up, build up, build up and then there's an explosion, okay? Uh, we, 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 we let it build up and then there's this boom and then there's a fight, right? I don't know what, how you are as a conf- uh, in, in terms of your personality with confrontation. You may be like that. When I say uh, India, I, I mean, I'm talking about like a whole nation within nation. So I don't know how anybody is here really, um, depending on... But, you know, you may be like that. You, your family may have been the kind of family where confrontation was never brought up until it was like this huge fight <laughs> where everybody's yelling and crying and we don't really know why, you know. Uh, or, or, or you just... Um, it's like... Or maybe your family is more just up... up upfront confrontational where the truth has just been bought but maybe it lacks in a little bit of grace sometimes the 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 walking with christ and i'm going to show you some scriptures show that that we need to we we need to have this brother and sister happening all the time truth and grace we can't separate the two so, so we need to be able to speak the truth to people in conflict. So say if there's conflict in our world, if there's a family member that's doing something crazy, if there's a spouse that's just being naughty, if there's a you know, brother, sister, mom, dad, we, 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 we can't just leave these things. Um, we think that we can, but we can't. At some point, it's going to come up. So how do we best go about bringing the truth to someone at the same time as keeping grace? Okay, that's what we're going to try, try to address today. So let's first go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, we're going to read verses 1 through to 7. And I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. <laughs> I'm a drummer, so I always like, think that's funny when I read that. You want to hear a, a, just a clanging cymbal without any music? Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Okay, you don't really. It's pretty, it's pretty rude, actually. Uh, where's my, there's my drumstick. This is, this is, a, this is, what, it, this is what the analogy is. Oh. <coughs> you ready? <laughs> Did you just say that's just like you? Okay, okay, I'm just that's hilarious. <laughs> it's like me. Okay, it's like me. So I'm just a resounding. If I speak the tongues of men or of angels, like highly spiritual person, like on cloud nine in terms of, but but if you don't have lung lungs, you don't have <laughs> love, <laughs> love. You don't have love or lungs. You're just like that symbol, just in the middle of nowhere, giving people a big fright. Okay? Second, if, uh, second chapter verse. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all the knowledge, come to me, learn from me. I know lots of things. And if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have... 
I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I, might, that I may boast, look at me, I'm so amazing how I can do everything that I do. But I do not have love, I gain nothing. Then it goes into love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but reduces, rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. The interesting thing about this scripture is it really shows how we can be so right, but be so wrong at the same time. Right? This is the standard of God's love for us. I mean, the verses 1 through to 3, it shows us, okay, how we can, we can have faith that can move mountains. Faith that can move mountains, yet be totally missing it. Yeah. We can be so wrong at the same time as being right if we don't have love. And, and the way that we, this outworks is through what we're saying through the way we communicate, through how we deal with conflict. We're either loving or we're hating, defined by our actions, by what whichever one we're doing. You, you can't be loving and hating at the same time. You're either loving or you're hating it, with your words. Your words are either loveful or hateful. What Jesus wants in our world, what the Holy Spirit is there for, to actually, that we, that as, as you see, like as I'm speaking this, you're like, oh man, he's going at it again. He's, he's pointing out the stuff that's wrong with us. Well, yeah, I am, because we need to know that we need faith for these things. We need to know that as we walk through life, that we need to be relying on God completely to fulfill His Word. If you look at this without having the Holy Spirit in you, if you have this, if you look at this and try to apply this without walking personally with Jesus in relationship with Him, you are going to fail. It's not going to work out for you. It'll become a list of things that you have to do and you'll be constantly trying. But in, in Christ, we, we, we can approach this with rest. Even though you see the difference between you and God and you and His standard, you can still walk with Him because of what Jesus has done on the cross. He died for all of our sins. For everything where we've let Him down, He took upon Himself the punishment so that we can grow in Him. Yes. And this is going to work itself out in our relationships as we communicate as we communicate with one another. See, in Psalm 85 verse 10, if you can just throw that scripture up, in Psalm verse 85, in chapter, chapter 85 verse 10, it says, Love and faithfulness meet together, righteousness and peace kiss each other. I love this scripture. See, this is what this is saying. In God, love and faithfulness, they meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Love the love is the grace. The love and faithfulness of God is His grace. The, the, the righteousness, well, that's the truth. The truth is, is we need God to be righteous. The truth, God, the truth is, is that God does have a standard that we don't quite meet. That's when you read the, when you read the gospel, when you, when you understand the news of God and Jesus and, and what He's done, you understand something like, oh, I, I can see that I needed God. Because his standard is higher than mine. That's the truth. But love and faithfulness meet together with righteousness and peace. They're together. And in God, what we have to do, what we have to begin to have the faith for is to begin to walk our lives living out peace and grace and truth together especially in the way we communicate with each other. And we have the Holy Spirit working in us to produce fruit. But what I want to do today is I want to give you some really, really practical application steps that you can use for communication. When you need to speak truth, when you need to, to, to your partner, to your children, to your whoever... When you need to speak truth and you don't have the ability to without becoming over-emotional or 
doing something that you wish you didn't do or whatever it is that, that happens to you when you're in real conflict. I'm not talking about kind of little things. I'm talking about real conflict. You understand? Um, and what I'm about to teach you is, is, is based out of a book. If I can just show you the cover, because I think that every one of you should read this book. Have you got this book? Yes. You're reading it? It's the Holy Spirit. Well, you're gonna, if you've already read this, then you're going to know what I'm about to talk about. This book is brilliant. If, um, if you... Uh, yeah, I'll take a photo because I want you all to read it. You know, <laughs> it's a great book. But don't just read it for entertainment. You know, a lot of people read books and they're like, oh, that was good. Yeah, some good points. <laughs> hmm, yeah. You need to apply it into your world. You need to learn, okay? And it's going to be hard. And that's where you need the Holy Spirit, okay? It's a great book. Dr. Henry Cloud is anything actually written by Dr. Henry Cloud. He also wrote, read, wrote a book called Boundaries, Boundaries in Dating, Boundaries in marriage, boundaries with children, boundaries with everything, boundaries. Um, he, all his books are awesome, so I would get the whole collection. But have a read of this, and this is what I'm just, I'm just letting you know that this, the next part of this sermon is totally based out of this, because I think the way this guy has kind of put it um, is the best way to put it. And I think it's, um, it's the most helpful for me. It's the best that I've come across so far. So sometimes maybe you're not going to read books, maybe you're not really going to buy this, but you're still going to hear this, so I'm going to preach it. Okay, so the first thing about how to communicate in truth and grace. The first thing is this formula. You need to use this formula. The formula is this, okay? When you do A, I feel B. Okay? When you do A, I feel B. Okay? Uh, this is my third point, but it's okay. I'm starting off with it. That's all right. That's why there's number three by it. But I, w I will be revisiting it. But let me give you an example. When... Hmm, let me give you a good example. When you're on the... When I'm trying to talk to you and you're on the phone... I feel lonely. I feel hurt. Right? That's that's an example. Now we're gonna we're gonna understand this a little more because this is important because what this does when we when we're doing this sort of communication is we're not playing a blame game. Uh, the, the the way that I have made the mistake of doing this is like when you're on the phone, when I'm trying to talk to you, I feel like you're not listening to me. So I'm not, that's not a feeling, that's actually a statement about what they're doing. Do you understand? So, so when, when, when you do A, I feel B. All right, stay with me. I'm going to explain this a little more. It's going to sink in. It's going to get easier. Look at the person next to you and say, it's going to get better. It's all good. The first thing you need to do in order to apply this formula in your world is this. The first thing is this, is you need to remember how much grace and truth mixed together you need right remember how much of God's grace mixed with God's truth you need in your world right this is the first thing we need to remind ourselves before we go into conflict before we open our mouths before we go into it we need to remember hold on a sec how much of God's grace do I need well the truth is without it we were nowhere Okay, um, in fact, Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5, it kind of gives us, and these are the words of Jesus, he gives us a bit of a, an assessment that we can do, right, before we go into conflict. He says, when you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye, how can you say to that, your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? When all the time there is a plank in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now, the interesting thing about this scripture is it doesn't say, Jesus doesn't say, just ignore the speck in your brother's eye. 
He doesn't say, just, just like pretend it's not there, just brush it over, have, have, have grace, have, have grace and, um, you know, love and just love them anyway. He doesn't say that. He says, he's talking about when you need to apply grace and truth into a person's world. And you need to go ahead and remove that speck for their, from their eye. Well, the first thing we need to do in the way that we assess the plank in our own eye is we realize how much grace that we have been given in light of the truth. Okay? We have to remember that. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead with that, with that truth that we've got and forget about how much grace that's been in our world and we're just going to punch that person's eye out. It's like, let me just take that speck from your eye. <laughs> right? And then what's that person do when you, when you go into conflict like that? Well, they defend themselves. They get defensive. They, and, and there's a fight and there's, it's all fireworks on, right? Who knows what I'm talking about? I mean, I've, I've been there. I've been there. I've been the person that has not assessed the plank in my own eye and not assessed the grace that God has had for me. And I've gone ahead and I've just tried to pluck a little speck out of someone, else, someone else's eye and it just always goes wrong. All right, so that's the first tip. Remember how much grace and truth you need. Second thing, number two, know your feelings. Know your feelings. Okay? You need to, you need to work out what's actually wrong with yourself. You know, when we go into conflict, we just go into it not actually knowing what we're feeling. Are you... Are you hurt about the behavior what what has the behavior done to you of the other person have they hurt you does it make you sad does it make you angry does it make you frustrated are you feeling frustrated by it all are you afraid because of their behavior are you anxious because of their behavior what are you actually feeling now this let me warn you will not come naturally we don't naturally do this It's like, um, what's that Katy Perry song? Don't be afraid to catch feels. <laughs> well, don't, don't be afraid to actually know what you're feeling. <laughs> you know, you can call it, I've got to catch a feel right now. I've got to know what I'm doing. Why, why, why is this person, when they do that, what am I actually feeling? You'll find that there will be some sort of fear. There will be some sort of anxiety. There will be some sort of loneliness. There will be something that the behavior of that person actually does to you. But how do we normally just, we just bolt on into it and say, oh, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. Right? Know what you're feeling. Now, this is important for the next point. The next point is this, number three. Communicate what you're feeling, not what you're thinking. Communicate feelings, not thoughts. And that is, when you do A, when you do that particular behavior, I feel this. Well, why is this important? Because all of a sudden, a person is like, uh, what, so my behavior is making you feel like that? I'm so sorry that you feel like that. Now, it doesn't matter who it is. And for parents, this is going to be particularly different, di difficult. And I, 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 I'm, I'm not um, um, here to give all of the answers. I think this is going to be hard because sometimes the children might get defensive or the spouse might get defensive. Other, the others in, might, may be defensive. But you need to, you need to always, always just look at it from, okay, well, how can I, how can I give you better feedback? How can, how can we work this out so that you can actually hear what I'm trying to tell you here? You know, you need to bring it back on yourself and, because then, and, and you need to continue to kind of work on in to talk about what you're feeling, what their behavior is doing to you, right? So, so this is what you don't say. For example, you don't say, when you don't listen to me, I feel like I shouldn't say anything. <coughs> Because that's a thought. I feel like I shouldn't say anything. You should say this. When you don't listen to me, I feel hurt and I feel disconnected from you. Do you understand? Their feelings. You've got to assess what's actually going on in your heart and communicate the behavior that that person is doing, what it's doing for you. 
you're, and then you're, because you're, then you're owning it, right? And the person's like, oh, okay, I see. And then you need to stick to your experience. It's number four. Stick to your experience rather than what the other person is, is doing. That's what you need to stick to. Stick to your experience. Just stay on that. Because, it, you know, they may get defensive. They may start arguing back. You need to hear them out. But do not engage in the blame game. And can I say on this, if they do get defensive, if they do, always err to the side of grace. And remember this, this is where God errs. He errs on grace. He leans towards grace. You see, if you, if you at that moment, you go, you know what, I've had enough of this competition. This is what you're doing. That's it. Boom. I'm going to give you the truth right now. You, you, you know, you stink, you're smelly, and I don't like it, you know, whatever. That person, I mean, the conversation's over, right? I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. And you may know, I mean, in some situations, it's like, we are never talking to this, about this again. Let's just oh, forget it. But if you err on the truth, on the, on the, on the, to, the, to grace, if you go to grace, well, then you may be able to have a conversation about it again later. And we need to remember last week's sermon, right, where we can actually go into coveting, where we can go into, where we need that person to have what we need to tell them, right? And we're going to force them into a situation where, we, where we're going to tell them. And, and all that does is bring more strife and more hurt and more pain, and you've got an argument we need to be, able to, to, to be able to lean towards grace. Sometimes we've just got to ask ourselves, do they have the capacity to hear what I'm telling them right now? And if they don't, you need to walk away. Do they have the capacity? Because, I mean, we have to remember, it is everyone's right not to do the right thing. Everyone's right not to do the right thing. God has given us a choice. And sometimes we do more than God to force our choices on other people and make them feel like we need them to do what we want them to do. Even God doesn't do that. He gives us a choice. And God has grace. So, okay, this is the truth, but if you're not hearing me, grace. We'll, we'll revisit this another time. Could you imagine how many arguments you would avoid? <laughs> our life would just be amazing without all of that conflict that we have in our worlds. If we could just apply some of these things... Communicate feelings, not thoughts. Stick to your experience rather than what the other person is doing. This totally avoids the blame game. Do not do the blame game. Number five, own your part of the feelings. So for every conflict, there's always your feelings. And this is part of your own assessment. I find that I have two different personality types. The person that has had enough sleep and the person who hasn't. <laughs> and depending on where you get me in the day, and people who know me know me, know, know me well enough to know that my personality changes. I'm not bipolar, as far as I know. <laughs> shut up, shut up. No, just kidding. I was <laughs> talking to the voices in my head. No, I'm not, uh, nothing like that. But let me tell you something. When I'm tired... I don't have as much grace as when I'm not, right? Sometimes I'm oversensitive. Sometimes I'm stressed. And, and things, we need, to, we need to own our part of those feelings, right? So we need to be able to say things like, you know what? I know I might be a bit oversensitive about this. I know that, that right now I'm really tired and maybe tomorrow morning, when I wake up, I'm going to say what a duffer I am. But right now, when you do A, I feel B. Do you understand? Rather than the, a fight, right? Rather than a... See, what this does when we do this is it opens a window to your heart so the other person can be drawn in. See, that's what love does. And it's, 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 it's unsafe... It's, you have to be vulnerable. It's counterintuitive to probably the way you've been parented, to the way you've been brought up. It doesn't feel like you're actually being strong. But when you actually open up like this and people see the human side of you, the broken side of you, they're going to they're gonna be drawn in. See, that's what God does. It's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. 
It's his kindness. He draws us in with his hope, his love. And he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to stand before us all and hang on the cross and be broken on our behalf. He was not afraid. Own your part of the feelings. Number six, be specific. Be specific. You're learning something? You with me still? I'm nearly done. I know this is like not the big inspirational preach where I'm like making you all the feelings inside of you go. I, I can do that, you know. I can, I can do all of that stuff. By, but, but let me tell you something. If you apply this into your world, it's going to change your world. Yeah. It is. It's going to change everything with your communication. Be specific. What do I mean about this? Okay, identify the attitude or the behavior specifically so the other person knows what you're talking about. Be specific. Okay, so this, this is great because sometimes we just launch off into communicating stuff and saying things and we don't even know specifically what we're talking about. <laughs> and that's only going to lead to conflict, right? See, this will stop you in your tracks from just launching on to fights that are unnecessary. Okay, when, when, you, when you know your feelings, you know you've assessed, okay, I'm hurt right now. And what they've done has, it's, man, it's, it's hurt me, okay? And then when we're specific about the behavior that has hurt you with them. So when you're late home from this, you know, I, I feel hurt that you don't respect, you know. Well, that would be a thought. But I feel hurt. I just, I feel hurt that you have come home at this time. I, it's just... Because I, I, I worry so much. Right? It draws you in. Identify the attitude or behavior specifically so the other person knows what you're talking about. So, so here's, here's, here's to conclude. And this is what a statement I'm just going to read out quickly from, from the, the author of this book that I want you to read called How to Communicate. Oh, what's the name of the book again? how to have that difficult conversation. This is what he says. He says, saying, when you do A, I feel B, is at the heart, uh, is at heart not only a way of confronting, but also a way of reaching out to the other person. Allow yourself, as much as it is safe, to let him or her see this part of your heart. We need to allow people to see our hearts. When you do A, I feel B, and focus on your feelings. So let's just run through them quickly again. Remember how much truth and grace you need. That's one. Know your feelings. Are you hurt, sad, angry, frustrated, angry, afraid, or anxious? Number three, communicate feelings, not thoughts. Okay? Don't launch on into thoughts. The moment you go into thoughts, it's going to be an argument. Number four, stick to the experience rather than what the other person is doing. This avoids a blame game. Five, own your part of the feelings. Own your part of the feelings. You may be overtired. You may be oversensitive. You may be stressed at that point in time. You need to own that part because the other person can see it. And this opens a window to your heart so the other person can be drawn in. And number six, be specific. Specificity is a big word. Be specific amen i feel like i've just like taught like a workshop on communication rather than being in church but you know with pastoring part of discipleship that's what i'm called to do is disciple people is sometimes we just got to get practical stuff in our world it's called practical discipleship where, where, and, and, and we as a church, we need to apply ourselves to such things. That's why I'm standing up here. Is why I'm doing. I'm not doing this for any other reason except that, in the hope that that relationships could get better in people's worlds. So I want to really encourage you get that book. If you don't get the book, at least listen to this a few times because I know that just to preach this sermon, I really had to go over this a few times to really understand what's going on. So I can, and I, I, want to, I don't want to just preach it, I want it to sink in onto my world. I want it to change my behavior. We need to allow time and we need to put time aside, you know, to do that. Netflix and, 
you know, Facebook and Instagram. These are all good things. I love them. Who, who, you know, who loves them? But sometimes we spend more time planning our next holiday to wherever we're going to go than on things that are so important that shape our worlds as much as these do. It's okay to plan your holidays. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. But imagine, imagine if you put the hard yards and work into this, how things could change into your world, right? And, and that's, that's part of the reason why we meet together as a church like this, to disciple. And we can grow each other in these areas, right? God has given us each other. Iron sharpens iron so that we can grow. So, amen? amen. C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital, where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely received. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3 Mumbai. Hey, it's Ryan here. If you enjoyed this message and you live in Mumbai, we would love to meet you in person. Why don't you come along 11.30 a.m. Studio 10 at Famous Studios in Mahalakshmi. 